Let's look at four super annoying things about the FTM 500. Stick around and we'll get right to it. Now, let me state right up front that I really am trying to like this radio. And there are a lot of good features built into it and a lot of things I do like about it compared to the FTM 400. And I am sure that this radio will grow on me over time. And hopefully they can fix at least a couple of these issues with a firmware update. But without further ado, let's head over to the radio and check some of these annoying things out. First up on the list is the smaller screen of the FTM 500. Let's take a quick look at that and you can see that, well, it's roughly two and a half inches. Now compare that to the over three inch screen of the uh, FTM 400 and you'll understand why I dislike this smaller screen. It really comes into play when we get into the APRS section of this video. But check this out. Let's just compare this to the FT5 and you can see that the screen on the FT5 is almost as big as the screen on the FTM 500. Now in an HT, I can understand the screen size. On this particular radio though, there's no excuse for this smaller screen. It's almost like Yezu took two steps forward and gave us several new features and took one step back with several things on this radio. I don't understand this big tuning knob at all. I never had issues with the FTM 400 in using the two side knobs over here to tune the radio. If they got rid of this, pushed these four buttons over or below, that would give them much more available real estate for a larger screen. This just confuses me. Number two on the list is the keyboard. Do you guys notice anything wrong with this keyboard? Well, it's not a QWERTY keyboard. We had the QWERTY keyboard on the FTM 400, and for whatever reason, Yezu decided to go with a keyboard that's in alphabetical order instead of giving us the normal QWERTY keyboard. Now, hopefully this is one of those things that they can fix in a firmware update, but it's number two on my list because this is just plain annoying to type on. Number three on the list of annoyances is the inconsistent buttons and knobs on this radio. Now I'm going to show you one of them right here in this section and then I'll show you a couple more as we go through the rest of the video. Here's just one of the inconsistencies. If I want to change the frequency on the subband, well I can reach over here and do it with this particular knob. However, if I reach up and grab this, I get no changes. Instead, we've got to go to the center knob to be able to cycle through the frequency or the memory list. This is just one of those things that doesn't quite make sense to me. It seems like if maybe you wanted to use the big knob, I would just be able to touch on the B band. Oh wait, that doesn't change anything like it did on the FTM 400. I would think though if I could touch on this and then rotate using the big knob, that would make more sense. Having to use the small one for the B band and the big one for the A band, well, it's just not consistent. Okay, so next up is the APRS interface on this radio, specifically if you want to reply to a message. So I'm gonna go ahead and short press the top right button and that brings me into this custom menu. Now, I do have to give them credit here. I like the custom menu of being able to assign whatever I want to the particular slots in this menu. As you can see, I've got my message list and my station list programmed into the last two options on this menu. So I do have to give credit where credit's due and I do like this new feature. So let's go ahead and go into the message list and we'll come down to um, this particular message here. Let's go ahead and click on that. Now we do that by short pressing on the top right knob here. Now, if I want to reply to this, Here's where the smaller screen comes into play yet again. With the FTM 400, we had a nice set of soft buttons that were right down here on the bottom of the screen. And to me, it was a lot more intuitive than what this radio gives us. 
But in this case, we're going to go ahead and press the button on the bottom right. We'll do a short press on it. We'll come over to reply and we'll press on that. Now, again, I think we should be given a keyboard right away on this particular screen here. Unfortunately, we don't get that. Yet again, on the 400, it was more intuitive because we had soft buttons across the bottom that kind of prompted us for the next action to take. In this case, we don't have them. But if we short press the bottom button again, we come into this menu. We can short press again to begin editing the text. Now, here's another one of those inconsistencies between radios. If I just start pressing the delete key right here in the bottom right hand corner, I would expect that to start deleting characters out of this uh, message here. That's the way it worked on the FT5. So I don't understand why they changed it up. Again, maybe this is one of those little items that they can fix with a firmware update. So the only way to delete this message, well, there's a couple of different ways. You can just start pressing the space button, which will clear the characters that are already in the message. But then we've got to press the back button to start typing. The other way we could do that, uh, let's assume that I hadn't deleted the first of the message. I've got to interrupt here for a second. Something that I didn't even notice until I was editing this video. And this is another one of those inconsistencies that just makes zero sense. Watch in this next clip where the uh, ABC123 button and the M text button switch places when you change to type in a number. This was the reason that I made the mistake that you're about to see in the video. We can just start typing over this right here. So uh, let's just put in my call sign. So KM4. And I touched something that I wasn't supposed to. So let's try clicking back. And let's do... Uh, A, C, K. And for somebody that actually types on a keyboard all the time, this is just frustrating. I have to literally hunt the letters because they're not in a normal keyboard order. Now, once we have put in that much of our message, now we can hit the space to clear out everything else. Once you're done, here's another one of those inconsistencies. If we click the back button right here, which is what I would expect to click, we will actually lose what I've already typed in. Let's go ahead and press the back button, and that message is gone. <sighs> inconsistencies, inconsistencies. All right, let's try this again. So we're going to go in right here using the uh, bottom button. We're going to edit the text. This time I'm just going to put in one of my short texts. So I'll say, uh, got it. So let's see. Nope, you got to use the top button. We'll say, got it. I'm going to press, short press this, I believe, to get that to insert in. And now if I, well, let's go ahead and take out a little bit of this message here, just so I can see it in on the screen. Now I'm going to long press this button here, the one in the top right corner, instead of using the back button. So if I long press it, now it comes back to the message. Of course, I didn't delete everything out, but you do see the got it 7-3 that I entered at the very beginning. Now to send that message, we've got to short press the bottom button again, and then go ahead and move over to message transmit. Short press the bottom button again, and it would go ahead and transmit that message out. But you've got to remember or got to figure out or something how to bounce back and forth between these two right knobs to get the APRS messaging to do what you want it to do. So will I quit using this radio or will I sell it? I don't know yet. Like I said in the beginning, I want to like this radio, but I am a heavy APRS user. And in that particular case, I just don't think it's the best radio. Maybe if they fix a few things in firmware, I will like it better, but I desperately miss the larger screen on the FTM 400. If you enjoyed today's video, be sure to give us a thumbs up before you head off. We will see you guys on the next one. Until then, 7-3.